Hey everybody, this is uh, Reverend Bradford Hole with Rock Family Live Special Edition. And uh, this evening uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, this is something that uh, was kind of on my heart and I just felt led to, uh, to let people know uh, what's going on. And really to, uh, to challenge us to be uh, more Christ-like. I don't know about you, but I really believe that we are living in the last days. And uh, hi, Sarah. We're sure glad to have you on the broadcast this evening for the special edition of Rock Family Live. I really believe that we're living in the last days and that we really have a responsibility to take the gospel uh, to our friends. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Hi, Sister Esther. Good to see you. That we have a responsibility to take the gospel to our friends, our neighbors, really the ends of the earth. And hi, Sandy. Good to see you there. I, uh, I really believe that we have an obligation to love people in both word and deed. Now, uh, hi, Mike. Good to see you there. I don't think it's loving to judge people or be critical. Hi there. Good to see you there, Sandy. Um, I don't think it's it's I don't think it's it's really good to judge people without a Christ-like background. Hi, Matt. Good to see you there. Hi, Mike. Um, so let me just share this with you here. Dottie Gradient is a stools teacher for 13 years, decided to travel across America, see the sights. She had taught about traveling alone on a track with a camper in tow. She launched out uh, one afternoon, rounding a curve on I-5, Sacramento rush hour. The water pump blew on her truck. She was tired, exasperated, scared, and alone. In spite of the traffic jam caused, no one seemed to be interested in helping her. Leaning up against the trailer, she prayed, Please, God, send me an angel, preferably one with mechanical experience. Within four minutes, a huge Harley drove up, ridden by an enormous man sporting a long black hair and beard and tattooed arms with incredible air of confidence, he jumped off without even glancing at Dottie, went to work on the truck. Within a few minutes, he had flagged down a larger truck, attached a tow chain to the frame of the um, disabled Chevy, and whisked the whole 56-foot rig off the freeway onto a side street, where he calmly continued to work on the water pump. The intimidated school teacher was too dumbfounded to talk especially when she read the paralyzing words on the back of his leather jacket. Hells Angels, California. As he finished the conversa the task, she finally got up the courage to say thanks so much and carried on a brief conversation. Noticing her surprise at the whole ordeal, he looked straight her in the eye and mumbled, Hey, don't judge a book by its cover. You may not know who you're talking to. With that, he smiled, closed the hood on the truck, straddled his Harley, and with a wave, he was gone as fast as he appeared. Who knows? Hi, Pam. Hi, uh, um, Jeanette. Uh, Kitty, good to see you there. Maybe, uh, maybe she was actually entertaining an angel. We don't really know. But... Um, in our society, we, we very often judge people on outward appearances. And, and the scripture is very clear that we need to judge people. We don't know their heart, but God knows the heart. Now you're saying, oh, but that's not my church, Pastor. That could never happen to me. Well, guess what? It does. And I've got uh, a story to tell you to prove it. This was actually just a, a last Sunday. Uh, this is a local church that uh, when we're not doing other ministry or traveling or as an evangelist or 
uh, you know, doing concerts, things like that. We serve at a local church just to want to be a blessing and teach a Bible uh, a study and and all that. Um, and my, my wife serves as well, too. And the kids enjoy the Sunday school and all that. But, uh, you know, if we think it doesn't happen, uh, this is kind of what happened this Sunday. Um, like I said, when I'm not, you know, I'm in this local church. And um, what ended up happening is a, a group of bikers adorned in leather, riding Harley Davidson motorcycles, decked out with tattoos, looking, you know, pretty intimidating, came into the church, but they were very respectful, very quiet in tandem, and they politely sat in the pew. When they did, um, uh, a number of congregants, not all of them, please understand, and certainly not the pastor and his wife, but a certain few, it was kind of, it's always kind of a few, actually literally got up out of their seats and moved to other seats, or some of them walked out of the service, which is, is kind of sad. And um, when, you know, when, when that happened, you know, we, we kind of worshiped the Lord for a little bit. And like I said, in the pastor's defense, he was the one who invited this group to worship with us that morning. And so he clearly was not one of those ones that, you know, was a critical spirit. When he got, when, when the uh, biker got on stage to share their powerful ministry and testimony, many gasped and were embarrassed and ashamed. Uh, our, you know, we are to judge, but we must do it with God's grace, God's viewpoint, and with the love and wisdom sprinkled with grace. So now let's take a look and see what the Bible has to say about judging unfairly. And by the way, if you're very angry with you might now, you might be a Pharisee. If you're um, boiling over with rage and thinking, who is this Bradford Hole? I think he's calling us out. You might be a Pharisee. If you're very proud of the fact that you publicly give large amounts of money to the church and dress in your finest outfits and plan your excursion to the church and color coordinate with your spouse, but don't want to associate with certain riffraff, keep your distance, you might be a Pharisee. And if you're too spiritual and I don't want to get contaminated with sin to contact unsafe people or allowed to come into the church to hear the gospel to get saved, you might be a Pharisee. Now that all the the ruffy, now if that ruffles your feather, feathers, and annoys you, um, let's kind of see what the Bible has to say. Hi, Clarence. Hi, Esther. Good to see you there. Okay, in Romans uh, two one through five, it says, "You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else." For what, whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you pass judgment, do the same things yourself. Now we judgment on the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do wrong things are based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and do the same things, do you think you're going to escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for his riches, his kindness, his forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? See, we got to understand a few things here. Hi, Cynthia. Good to see you there on the broadcast today. A um, couple of things we need to understand. We need to understand that a lot of us were, were no better than, uh, than, you know, those who are rough and rough around the edges who are coming into the church, we should rejoice that God is drawing people to himself and, uh, and, and do not judge on outward appearance. So the other thing is, let's take a look at Matthew 7, 1 through 6. Do not judge or you will be judged. For in the same way, if you judge others... 
you will be judged. For with the same measure you use it, you will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank, the giant beam that's coming out of your own eye? How can you say to your brother, take the speck out of, of my eye when all the time there's a plank in your own? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's ride. Now, okay, now you're really probably angry with me. But God's word is what it is. First thing we need to do is realize we are not God, and we cannot look into a person's heart or judge their motives. Hi, Mandy. Good to see you this evening. We need to realize that we need to have the love of God. Hi, Janice. Good to see you this evening. We need to walk in love. Now, I'm not saying we should overlook clear violations of sin, especially in Christian leadership, okay? But the first thing we need to do is we must pray for them. There are many years ago, I was a young man involved in ministry at a, at a local church, and the pastor was involved in the whole it was just a mess. It was just some horrible things going on. And it took two years of fasting and praying before the Lord used me as a prophet to bring a word of challenge to the existing pastor. Well, it turned out he rejected and God's judgment came upon them. The church burned down. Him and his wife ended up getting terrible illnesses. Um, and I'm not happy about any of that, but I, you know, I just, all I did is deliver the word in, in a loving way, but I waited two years to deliver that word to make sure. And I did it in the most loving possible way that I could. So I'm not saying we overlook sin, but we need to pray and we need to make sure we're walking in, in relationship with the Lord and that we're we're in the word that we know what we're talking about. So that's the first thing is we need to make sure that that we are living for Jesus Christ the way he wants us to. Hi, Matt. Good to see you there. Um, hi, Tim. Uh, love having you on the broadcast. Welcome, everybody. And so we're talking about really having a critical spirit or being a modern-day Pharisee. See, and, and by saying that, hi, Steve, I am not saying that we should embrace greasy grace or sloppy agape. In other words, we shouldn't profess ourselves to, to follow Christ and then live a life of, of debauchery. Certainly, God forbid, we need to live a life as holy as we can. But the fact of the matter is we are going to make mistakes. And we need to, and, and God was gracious to love us and to accept us and forgive us. What makes us any better than the poor individual who has not known the Lord and is just coming to know the Lord, or maybe doesn't even know the Lord yet? The fact of the matter is, I believe that God deals with us in different areas in our lives. We all seem to be stronger in some areas and weaker in others. There's some that are, for very example, they're great in their finances, but they struggle in their relationships. There's some that are, the, that are great in relationships, but the finances are a struggle. Some of, uh, you know, uh, people have fear and doubt and sicknesses. And, you know, there are all kinds of different situations. And especially certain situations, maybe, uh, you know, people are prayed for healing and they don't receive their healing. Who are 